Hello, community! Today, today we have here a user question and actually a lot of questions from our viewers about the same topic. How can you add thousands of PDFs to my LLM? Okay, why not focus on this? So there are three solutions. First, you are very rich, the corporate solution. You go to OpenAI, you say, hey, I want my private GPT-4 machine at OpenAI and you pay upwards of $100,000 per month, maybe 1 million. So, you know, the financial resources are unlimited in this solution. And now you can train your, chip, your private GPT-4 machine on your sensitive corporate data. Great. Now there's a solution about, let's say, $10,000 plus per year. Let's focus on this. And the third solution would be if you are not interested to use any third party apps or anything, you just code it yourself. But let's focus today here on this solution where you say, hey, a small, medium enterprise, 10,000 plus dollars per year. What about this version? So you have a user query and you say here to GPT-4, to ChatGPT, your LLM that you have on your local machine, hey, explain a new scientific method like SQ8B in simple terms. Now, the LLM, the large language model, might not have been pre-trained and fine-tuned on this new scientific method because it was published after the LLM went public itself. So what do we do? Now, it is easy. You have, in a classical, old-fashioned way, an agent that connects the LLM to the Internet. And the LLM says, hey, I have no inherent information about this SQ8B, so either you go to the Internet and said, find me 100 relevant sentences about this topic and feed me back 100 sentences so I can give a user here the answer. Or if you are a corporation or anything else, you say, hey, I have my private data in a vector store, in a vector database here within my corporation. Let's focus on this. And what we do in a vector store, it is very easy. We convert semantic information that is stored in sentences into numerical data that is stored in vectors. And we can apply mathematical operation on vectors. We cannot apply mathematical operations on sentences. Now you know why we have vector stores. So let's say here are our, let's say, PDF documents. Small hint, whenever you have your original document with your chemical formulas, with your mathematical formulas, you convert it to PDF and PDF is then read by the vector store, you have sometimes problem that, for example, a complex mathematical formula is displayed correctly. Therefore, I personally, I do not use PDF, but I use LaTeX for the complete scientific notation in papers. But this is just to tell you, you convert, you convert, you convert, and there are conversion errors or limitation. So be careful about this. But let's say we have here thousands of PDF papers and we now read in these papers that contain sentences and we want to store them in the vector store database as vectors. Easy. The goal is to find, of course, semantically similar sentences by applying simple mathematical operations on the vector representation, on the vector embedding of our sentences. So what we do? This user query here that comes from LLM and LLM says, hey, I have no idea about it. Goes to the agent, the agent goes out in the real world with the corporate databases and says, hey, I have here this query that is also transformed now in a vector. We're talking about a query vector. And here all those PDF, all the, let's say, 1 million sentences in all of those PDFs. Here we have now for each sentence a vector. So we have 1 million vectors here. And as you can see, semantically similar. So information about SQ, 8B or whatever you have. Here is a little square. So now is from those millions and millions of vector representation, find those vector representation 
that are semantically similar and have, for example, here anything to do with this new scientific method. So great, you say, no problem at all. I have my query vector and I have my document vector. Now in the simplest case, I do still a cosine similarity operation. But of course, if we go with vector store databases that have tens of millions, hundred millions operation, you need to be faster. So good idea, this is a database. So we know everything about databases for centuries. So therefore we have now a simple similarity query. Or if you want, if you're really huge data, you can have here an index. What is an index? Well, invented about 2000 years ago. If you open a book, the first page you have the index, chapter one, chapter two. So you know exactly what are the main topics and where you can start to read if you look for a particular topic. So you go to chapter two, subparagraph seven, and there you find your topic. This is an index. This is done in a vector store. So all of this lives here outside of LLM, and LLM has no idea about your private corporate data. Great. What does the vector store returns to the LLM? Seven sentences. Seven sentences, and those are the most important sentences that explain SQ8B. So the vector store replies over the agent here to the LLM, hey, here are seven sentences. You know, our LLMs have some limitations regarding the token length. Normally we have about 100,000 tokens, 200,000 token. So you have to limit here the input that comes back to an LLM. You cannot provide here 10,000 PDF documents. I have a video about unlimited token, but this is another topic. <laughs> so you get seven sentences back to the LLM and what happens? Now the LLM takes those seven sentences and being an intelligent storyteller, it says, okay, now I know what it is. And now it generates an answer to the user. It says, hey, this new scientific method, SQ8B, is based on an index of vector topics about blah, blah, blah. So you see, this is how you have thousands and ten of thousand PDF, how you convert them to a vector store database, commercially open source, cloud-based, within your IT department, wherever you are. You have almost unlimited options. And you just get seven sentences back. That's the GPT-4, Falcon, Llama 2, whatever is your LLM, uses to generate an answer. Great. So if you want here, you can have all of this within your corporate border, within your firewalls, within your cybersecurity, whatever. Or if you normally go, you have here a public or private cloud where you have your corporate documents or relevant other documents. Your vector store can be on your local machine, can be on a public or private cloud. Your LLM can be an open source uh, proprietary on a public or private cloud. So the combinations are almost unlimited, but you see cybersecurity as absolutely paramount. If you want to learn more about vector store databases, four videos on my channel, months old, but very informative, I think that explain this in more detail. If you want to learn more about AI agents, I have from here three months ago, baby AGI, auto GPT, about transformer agents, star coder, stable diffusion, link chain, everything you can do with agents. And at the end of the video, if you are a little bit more technically interested, so five technical minutes for you, otherwise the video finishes here officially. But if you want to go on and dive a little bit deeper, how we do data indexing and similarity search now in a database system where we store vectors. Now, rather easy. So let's say we have created here 1 million sentence vectors. And now we want not to compare one search query vector with 1 million sentence vectors. However, it is rather fast, less than a minute on my local laptop. You say how we can speed this up. 
Now, there are four options I show you here. You have hierarchical clustering. This is a bottom-up approach to cluster. It starts with each vector as its own cluster and then merges clusters together until there's only one cluster left. And the clusters are merged together based on their similarity measure in a vector space. So, you know, we have everything from Euclidean metric, from cosine similarity, whatever metric you want, you can build it for your specific application. The exact opposite is topic modeling. This is a top-down approach. This means all everything is here in a single cluster, contains all of the vectors, and then you split up the cluster into smaller clusters and you see how those smaller clusters arrange. Beautiful. Vector quantization, very easy idea. You take a continuous vector space, a mathematical operation, and you um, have now, you divide it in finite number of cells of your vector space is now discretized. Easy mathematical operation. Or an inverted index, what is it? The inverted index stores the location of each vector in the index, but does not store the vector itself. A vector can be 1,000 dimensional, 5,000 dimensional, so rather large memory requirements. But if you just have a pointer where it's location, you can be much faster in your operation. Now, let's have here a look at one of the open source vector databases. Uh, whatever you choose, I choose here Milvus. And if you have a very short look, just did a quick search on the internet. I'm not an expert. It is not sponsored. I don't use this, but just to give you an idea. It says support varying a variety of indexing methods. You have here in a flat file, or then you have here specific methods where you have quantization methods and specific trees. I will show you this in a second. So you have, coming from the database experience, a lot of options that you can use. For example, here, this specific method stands for an inverted file combined with a signature quantization and an 8-bit coding. So what you do, you have an inverted file, you have a vector quantization, and then the vectors are quantized into 8-bit codes. We know this already from LoRa and quantized LoRa in a different topic. But this is it. Interestingly, if we go back more than 10 plus years, we have now here the use in the database of, the old, of our classical sorted k-dimensional trees, for example, that are now helpful here in our vector stores. So if you want to see, if you do not know k-dimensional tree structure that we use here for efficient searching for the nearest neighbor queries, or for range queries in multi-dimensional spaces. There's a lot of information on the internet to give you an idea how you can combine different methodologies and be real fast in your query algorithm. So this is it, more or less. So here you see how you can combine thousands and tens of thousands of documents. PDF is not the best encoding format, but for another topic, wherever you have them in the cloud, how this works together. So you see, you do not bring 10,000 PDF into your LLM. This does not make sense currently, or you are very rich and you can afford here your private GPT-4 machine at OpenAI. But otherwise you use here uh, tools like currently a vector store, where you update this here to an own AI system. I have a video about this. And this is here the simple explanation given the request by my viewer. This was it. I hope it was a little bit informative and it would be great to see you in my next videos.